Now, the next bit that I'd say needs to be addressed is the lore, especially in regards to other games. You see, the stuff that Fallout 76 has invented for itself is actually pretty good. I like the mutant animals, like the sloths, and their abomination bee creatures are pretty cleverly designed. They also have a race of beings known as the Scorched, who are the main rival faction in the game, and they're reminiscent of the Marked Men from Lonesome Roads DLC of Fallout New Vegas. There is also a race of Mole Miners, who have an origin shrouded in mystery, and I kinda like them as an alternative to the Super Mutants. They would be a great alternative if, you know, the actual Super Mutants weren't in the game, but we'll get to that in a bit. Unlike the Marked Men, the Scorch lack any real identity or depth. One thing that made the Marked Men interesting enemies was the lore behind them. You see, most Marked Men were enemies on two sides of a conflict, but the pain of being burned alive and mutated into being fleshless abominations brought them together and unified them. However, they still wear their old outfits as a memory of who they used to be. They even go as far as to make new pieces of their armour out of the place that they lost their humanity to, that place being the Divide and some of them have even crafted Legate Linnaeus' mask as a mark of disrespect. The Scorched, on the other hand, have no social structure, no clear identity of their own, and are really just feral ghouls that can use weapons. It's a shame as well, because they actually have some pretty cool and interesting things going about them. They say some pretty weird and kind of messed up things in combat, but you obviously never get to learn what their goal is or why they exist. I know that they're victims of a disease, but it would still be cool if they were fighting to achieve something in their deluded state. Like, what if the disease itself was what controlled them? Or what if they saw it as some sort of god worth fighting for? I do appreciate that sometimes no answer is better than a weak one. I mean, stuff like Prometheus kind of proves that's the case. But in this case, I just find the lack of gaps filled in to be more lazy than well thought out but not giving you all the answers because they wanted to have some intrigue. They're not giving you all the answers because there are no fucking answers because they didn't think that far ahead. Oh, there's one of those things. Yeah, I thought it was going to move it. <laughs> one of the biggest weaknesses of this game is the fact that it is actually creatively lazy. The sad part is that visually it isn't, and some aspects of the game are actually kind of cool, but others are just so lacking and it really leaves a hole where the intrigue should be, and you really need that in an open world game like this. I also really like the mythical urban legend creatures that are formed due to the radiation and other factors. Several of them, like the Wendigo, w Wendigo, Wendy, whatever they're called, are actual creatures of folklore. You might recognise them from games and movies like Until Dawn, where they're the main antagonists. I also like the factions in the game, like the Responders and the Fire Breathers, who I affectionately call the Mouth Breathers, who are actually the remnants of the emergency services from before the war. The responders consist of displaced police officers, paramedics and doctors, and the mouth breathers consist of the firefighters. As a concept, I actually like this. They aren't completely post-apocalyptic at this time, but they do have an evolving identity, especially when it comes to the younger members of the organisation. Like a lot of things, this aspect is somewhat ruined by the game's lack of NPCs. You only find these people as corpses and holotapes, so it really makes it feel like wasted potential. However, though the law has a few issues here and there, it's nothing compared to the problematic attitudes that they've got to established entities. You see, this is a Fallout game, and as a result, they need to have the Brotherhood of Steel and Super Mutants in the game. Like, you have to, it's like in the Treaty of Versailles or some shit. Well, they don't need it, in a real sense. More like they need it, like those fuckwits need that school shooter game to own the lips. It's just something unnecessary, clunky and stupid that doesn't satisfy anyone, except for some people who've got it into their heads that it actually does, for some reason. You see, this game is set 25 years after the bombs drop, 
and as a result, the Brotherhood of Steel is a barely formed entity in California, and yet somehow it has a branch out here? Like, this doesn't even tie into Bethesda's changes to the law made in 3, where the Brotherhood moves across the country after the events of Fallout 2. That makes a bit of sense, because by that point the Brotherhood were in a losing battle and would probably be wiped out, that was more than possible. It actually is possible in Fallout New Vegas, so yeah, I can understand them wanting to move. But why would they start scouting across such a great continent at this point, when they can barely scout California? How the hell did they even manage it to begin with? I honestly think it would have been better if the Brotherhood were like the Responders and the Mouth Breathers, and originally I thought this was the case, that the Brotherhood stuff was just a placeholder for them in the early screenshots. The idea of a remnant army faction really works for me, and they kind of did this by having the Brotherhood recruit army remnants, who had lost their purpose in the world. However, an army-based faction would make a lot of sense given that there are army vehicles and army bases scattered around the map, but nope, gotta get that brand recognition in there. I mean, if you wanted it to be like Fallout 4, why not just set it when Fallout 4 is set? For fuck's sake! However, this is just minor compared to the major fuck up that is the Super Mutants. I honestly didn't get at first why there were Super Mutants 25 years after the nuclear holocaust, but it's okay, they came up with an explanation. It's just horribly insulting. You see, the original Super Mutants don't exist for another 50 or so years, and they were actually the result of painstaking work done by a mad and rather deluded genius who wanted to create his own master race. The idea of a perfect world, in his eyes, was a somewhat misguided attempt to unify everyone. Of course not. Most will be offered a chance to become a mutant. Those who deny this opportunity will be sterilized and let go. Those that resist will be executed. All that resist, yes. And all those that are required for the unity as well. The remainder will be allowed to live out their days, but under unity, control, and protection. But none shall breed, for they will be the last of their race. By making everyone a super mutant. His idea was that removing all differences would remove all tensions among each other and allow us to evolve and give us a brighter future. The Super Mutants are one of the franchise's more interesting footnotes in the lore. I actually like them as a good bit of sci-fi, and initially they were just a monstrous horde, but then they ended up losing their purpose and having to fit in with the human world. And in Fallout 2 in New Vegas, the Super Mutants are found dealing with having their purpose ripped away from them. Some become feral, some others become productive members of society, and others isolated themselves and chose to live with their own kind in their own way. Fallout 3 did this a bit differently, making all mutants feral beasts who attack anyone and anything that isn't one of them. Bethesda wanted the mutants to be on the east coast and reinvented them, giving them a new purpose, and in truth, I feel like they did a decent job of giving us an alternative version of an established race. These super mutants had no leader or purpose, and as a result were cavemen with large weapons who terrorised the region and unlike their west coast counterparts had no reasoning ability. Fallout 4 was similar, a new batch of super mutants was formed, this time as super soldiers by the institute. This is an idea that is somewhat of a bridge between Fallouts 1 and 2 and 3, given that some super mutants were capable of reasoning, without being complete freaks of nature like the west coast counterparts. But they did have a tribalistic and rather feral nature that their Fallout 3 brothers had. I feel that more could have been done with the Fallout 4 mutants, like if the Commonwealth had its own version of Jacobstown, I, it would be pretty cool, and it would take us to a new place with the East Coast Super Mutants. However, it's clear Bethesda sees them as merely beasts, who only exist to serve as cannon fodder for the player, as proven in Fallout 76. However, these Super Mutants predate all of that, being the earliest iteration of this creature. 
So these are the original Super Mutants. How did the original Super Mutants come to be? The answer is, uh, well, apparently, there was an environmental spillage with a chemical that just so happened to be FEV, the right formula of FEV that created Institute Grade Super Mutants, and it contaminated a river and those who came into contact with it became Super Mutants. So yeah, the original Super Mutants were the result of pollution. <sighs> For fuck's sake. Yeah, yeah, you know what? Here's an idea, right? Why don't we make a prequel to Star Wars The Phantom Menace with Stormtroopers? Oh, it's okay. I have an explanation. Jango Fett took a dump in some toxic waste and that turd turned into a clone army that became the first Stormtroopers. It just works! It just works! A lot of people have come to this game's defence when this is brought up by saying, well, it's set in the past, and it's 25 years after the war, and therefore, it's harder for them to have the Brotherhood of Steel and the super mutants in the game. <laughs> That's akin to seeing an Olympic sprinter take the starting pistol and then shoot himself in the foot with it, then, when he's crawling to the finishing line, getting the worst finish time in the history of Olympic sprinter history, some people say, well, to be fair, he did have a bullet in his foot, he put it there! For a start, the Brotherhood and the Super Mutants do not need to be here. The Brotherhood could have been some other form of military remnant, which would make more sense, because you see a lot of army vehicles around the place, and the Mole Miners, as established, would make a good replacement for the Super Mutants anyway. Hell, they're tough enemies, and they're interesting and creepy as fuck. The way that they scream into their breathing apparatus is unsettling, and they can make a genuinely creepy atmosphere. Honestly, I'd say that they're superior to the Super Mutants. But if you absolutely must have these two things in your game for, let's say, brand recognition, then just set the game after Fallout 1. It's not bloody hard. You could have made that work just as well, if not better. The final note on this is what they did with the Enclave. Yes, the Enclave are in this. It turns out that they're a secret organization who are basically the Illuminati and they control everything or something? I know that this was kind of alluded to, but uh, for fuck's sake, Bethesda, if you were this desperate for a plot, y you could have stolen a better one off fanfiction.net. I mean, there are legitimately better stories on that site than this pile of shit. Let's just move on to something else.